Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead, Morgan. Um, um, so I, for those of you who were here um, at our last meeting, we um, developed some uh, discussion questions for us to kind of like um, think about throughout the meeting if we need some some things to check in on. But I can, I have a feeling that discussion is going to go very smoothly. There's like a lot for us to talk about here. Um, I think Lauren is going to go ahead and send those um, in the chat. Um, should I go ahead and get started with introductions? Okay. Um, so uh, for introductions, we um, have an icebreaker. How it goes is we're going to say our names, pronouns, and then answer this um, icebreaker, which the question that we have today, which is inspired by Marjane's work by the masterpiece that is Embroideries, um, who is an older person in your life, like a family member, friend, or life teacher uh, who you look up to or who has given you a positive piece of advice? Um, after you do your little introduction, um, make sure to popcorn it to somebody else on the screen to like give them a chance to introduce themselves. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll go first. Um, my name is Morgan. I use she, her pronouns. And um, a, to answer the icebreaker, I recently with um, my friend Nicole, who is on Ellen's screen right now, um, we started volunteering um, for this, doing this new volunteer thing where we get to talk to um, an older person on the phone and like hear about their lives and they tell us like stories. And um, my friend who I get to talk to each week, his name is Robert. And I think that Robert over the past few weeks has really been somebody who has given me a lot of like really interesting pieces of life advice. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he lives in Cincinnati. He loves, he was a dog trainer at one point. <laughs> Very cool guy. Um, I'm going to popcorn it to Dee, who's going to be sharing the, the screen with me today. Hello, I'm Dee. My pronouns are they, she. I would say that my, the older person, so I can't think of like when I often go to, but the most recent occurrence was my coworker's roommate. His name is Tim. He's 36. I did not think he was that old, but he was giving me just a lot of good advice about like kind of building a foundation for yourself. And it was really nice. Um, I'm gonna let Morgan pop it to the next admin. Stephanie, cause you're next on my screen. Hey everybody. Um, my name is Stephanie. I use she, they pronouns. Um, as my associate over here mentioned, I'm also Hardcover Hotties admin. And I, when I think about someone older who's like giving me, giving me like good life advice, um, I think of my godmother. Uh, she's like notorious in my family for being for being like a very opinionated woman and likes to like insert herself in like different conversations. Um, so even though that might have like a negative like framing around it, I find it endearing and kind of awesome of her to um, be so vocal about what she thinks. So I love um, taking the time to, um, whenever I'm home, like sit down and like have dinner with her and like hear everything she has to say. And though we might not agree, um, on every topic because of like the generational divide, uh, I still really appreciate like all of her input. Um, and I think I'm going to popcorn it to um, my sweet friend, Erin. Hi, I'm Erin. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, the person in my life who I look up to a lot 
Um, my partner's aunt, she like, she just like knows everything. Like one of those people that you could like spend hours talking to. And like, she just has like so much knowledge that it like kind of takes the pressure off me. I'm like, okay, you got things like kind of handled here. Like I can chill out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just like to hear, I don't know, just everything she has to say. Um, and I will popcorn it to Lauren. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren. I use she her pronouns. I'm also an admin. Um, someone that I go to. OK, so I didn't know my great aunt very well because um, she is very, very, very old. Um, I only knew her for like a couple years when I was younger, but my mom loves to tell stories about her, especially like around the holidays. Um, she like had a, a chicken farm in Florida for like the longest time. Um, and she just there, I feel like there's always a crazy story about her. So I like to hear stories about her like through my mom. So yeah. Um, and I will popcorn it to Amy. Hi guys, I'm Amy. I use she, her pronouns, and someone I look up to like always, but also I was just thinking about this because I was just talking to her on the phone, my mom, um, because she was like, we were just randomly having a conversation about like the immigrant experience and she was opening up about like a lot of stuff that's sh that she like hadn't told me before. And I was like, wow, like that is a lot like in a in a good way, because I was glad to um, like talk about it with her. But yeah. And I shall popcorn to Douglas. Thanks, Amy. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Douglas. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, and the person I think I would say that I look up to, I guess I would also say my mom, um, because as of recently, I've been in my, my, my African proverb, my quotes, um, phase and I feel like she always has one that is just right for any situation and I love telling my friends about those quotes too so yeah. you should share one for us as we enter this meeting <laughs> um, 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 oh um a word to the wise is enough a word to the wise is enough. So you should only have to say it once for the person to understand. You want to popcorn it to someone? No, because y'all were just looking at me and I was like, yeah, um, I'm going to popcorn it to Tally. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Tally. She, her. Um, and someone that I look up to and, you know, really like the advice that they give me is actually my boss, um, Tori. She always loves to tell me things straight, especially like when it comes to career advice and those types of things. Like she's very honest um, and forthcoming with, you know, sharing like uh, information and advice with me, which I've never really had in a boss before. Um, and it's like less of like a scary boss relationship and that she actually like wants to see me do better, I guess. Um, and so like, you know, looking to a future, that's, you know, what I would always like my relationships to look like. So, yeah. Oh, let me popcorn it um, and I will popcorn it to Nia. Hi, guys, I'm Nia. Um, I'm okay with any pronoun. And someone that I look up to is probably my grandpa. Um, I call him G Daddy. And he's just always being so sweet to me, um, super supportive. He always sends me like good morning texts and is like, I'm so proud of you. Like if I have one fan, it's, it's gonna be him. Um, yeah, I'm gonna popcorn to Ellen. Uh, 
Ellen, I think we're having, I don't know if you could hear us right now, but we're having some difficulty hearing you. Um, someone, you just I think I think we're in the middle of nowhere. While we wait to hear from Ellen, um, would someone very graciously volunteer to go? Hi, I will graciously volunteer to go. Camera off right now because I'm doing a face mask and face mask, and I look uh, pretty crazy right now. Um, I use he him pronouns. I'm Charles. Um, recently, I've gotten like a new mentor. She's the city auditor of Columbus, first queer woman in that position. Um, she's given me a lot of really cool career advice and also just helping me network in Columbus. So shout out to Megan Kilgore and I will popcorn to Drew. Hello, my name's Drew. Um, is, oh, okay. <laughs> um, my name is Drew. Um, I, most of you would probably know me by River. Um, I use any pronouns as well. Um, and I would say that if there was one person that I look up to, I would probably say my grandma, just because like, I think she teaches me a lot of lessons unintentionally just by showing me a lot of appreciation and love. And even though sometimes mm -hmm. it comes across kind of misguided or, um, in a, in a way, it, it, it ultimately reminds me of a lot of good stuff. And I, I think she, I've learned a lot from her, uh, un, unintentional or not. Um, I will popcorn it to Harrison. OK, cool. All right, my name's Harrison. I use he, him pronouns. And like for my mentor, I would say uh, there's this basis for his gospel choir woman named Micah. And I found like. He feels like who I'll be in like four years if I keep like trying to be myself. Like, he's also he's like a great musician who can play like four different instruments, and at like the same time, he like knows how to be a good person, and like, not just like as people expect, like in a in a like a uniquely him way. So, yeah. Is there anybody? Can I have popcorn to anybody? I don't think so. Right. Yo. Hello. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, I didn't actually have anyone that I really looked up to. Instead, I more found a lot of truth in, oh, I'm sorry. My name is Jennifer Blix and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I picked up good advice from I picked up advice from a lot of people. And one of those people was my grandfather. He was a bigot, so I didn't look up to him. But he did tell me once that he was grading one of my papers for me. I broke a grammar rule and he corrected it. And I, and I corrected him. I, I told him, well, I saw Stephen King do this in the last book that I read from him. So why can't I break that rule? And he told me, when you're good enough, you can break any rule you want. And I really feel like that helps me cope with losing the small battles out of the whole war because I know that eventually 
I'll make it to a place where we don't have to be the break the rules to be ourselves. And I think that deep down, he wasn't actually a bigot. He was just born in the wrong generation, which ties back into it. And um, things like that, I think he knew. So how about Ellen? So we're going to do Ellen's introduction for them just because of uh, technical issues. But um, so Ellen said, pretend I'm Ellen. I'm Ellen. I use they, she pronouns. I'm also an admin and they chose their dad because he is super, super wise. Um, and as someone who has met Ellen's dad, I can say that I, I agree with the statement um, good choice, good choice, Ellen. Um, and in the image that you see um, right next to Ellen is our dear friend, Nicole, who uses they, she pronouns, and they look up to their aunts a lot, which as someone who has also met their aunts, uh, what, a, what a great decision. Um, awesome mentors that we all have around us. And thank you for sharing, you guys. Um, before we get into discussion, I also wanted to note that um, at the end of our meeting, we are going to be hanging out on Zoom, uh, drawing little comics. Um, and I don't know if y'all saw our uh, Instagram posts, but we are collecting like comment, comics, comics from hotties um, that depict a um, like wonderful like conversation that you had um like with family members a community that you feel safe in um a love woo or woe um epic fail or epic win or um something of the sort so um make sure to hang out for that but i'm going to pass it over to um one of my other friends to get discussion kicked off Um, okay, so to begin discussion, I'm going to be referencing one of the questions in the chat, um, but before, Charles, sorry, I just saw Charles's message, but um, Charles, I hope you're, you're able to figure that out and your, your beard is okay and your face is okay. Um, but the first question I'm gonna ask is, what were your thoughts before starting to read embroideries given the title? What does the title embroideries mean to us and what imagery does it conjure? So if anyone has any thoughts, feelings, uh, yeah, feel, feel free. Before um, reading the book, I thought that embroideries was maybe kind of about like the old Victorian idea of like women sitting around and doing embroidery together and talking, you know, and like that being like a, a gathering space for women to discuss. Um, and so it was obviously different than what it actually means. Um, but I feel like that was probably intentional, like an intentional, you know, play on words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually were talking about that like very same thing pretty much when we were coming up with this question. For me, embroideries also remind me of like knitting circles, like sewing circles. Um, and since the book is related so much to gossip, and that's a topic that we've like referenced in a lot of the questions as well. Um, that's also a space where like positive gossip can occur and like sharing of information in a small like interested community and I do I agree I think it was intentional for sure and also it's interesting that like it's only the title it's there's like the the embroidery hoop like uh image like on one of the one of the first pages but it's like never brought up again in the context of like arts and crafts or anything um so yeah I feel like that was purposeful too I'd like to talk about, I had like a slightly different idea. I was thinking it was like a, like a quilt of life thing. We have like all these little patchwork of stories that kind of link together and it kind of turned out like that. So yeah, that's what I think. 
Yeah, I hadn't thought of that before, but I feel like that is true too, because I mean, in my family, at least like a lot of my extended older family, like, like crochets and does embroidery and things like that. So um, I feel like a lot of the stories that I've learned about them are through talking about like the, the actual embroidery pieces that are like remaining now. So yeah. Um, does anyone else have any mm -hmm. thoughts? For me, I think, okay, so I read the, this, I like first visited this book like a while back and actually what you were saying Harrison was what came to mind for me like I was like oh it's gonna be like a patchwork of like different stories um and what really caught my attention was the cover um of like the woman like turned over like looking into the like the reader uh, I thought that was just like a really interesting depiction of somebody and I thought it was gonna like center around like this one person then I found it super interesting to see that it was like a still of uh, Mar Jane's like grandmother, but not only just like her grandmother, but her grandmother off of like opium because she thought it would make her look like more sultry and seductive. So that like look over the eye and like her kind of closed eyes are like a result of her literally like being being on drugs. And was like, yeah, um, don't I look so don't I look so cute right now? Um, with my slightly closed eyes. Um, so just like Marjorie choosing like that depiction and it going along again with like embroideries was just such a fun um connection to like make just with like the cover of it. Um, yeah, also it's, um, oh wait, go ahead, Morgan. Go ahead. Um, uh, this is something that we're bringing up later too, but it's status as a graphic novel and obviously like the incorporation of imagery is really important, um, to the story. Uh, so yeah, I feel like the title, um, definitely brings up imagery and then her like actually seeing the depiction of it means something too but Morgan you can go ahead um just to tie what Stephanie and to just to tie what Stephanie said into another topic that was like um salient for um us when we were talking about like the book before this but um with like the the opium and the slightly closed eyes um the concept of like just hearing her grandmother talk about that and the reasons why that was like alluring to her was because like a man doesn't a man will like um I forget the quote but it was like it'll be easier easier to like find lovers when you like look more like yeah yeah when, you, yeah, when your eyes are like closed and you're just like full of lust but like um the and I think there are a lot of like references throughout the book to like how um we keep up like our physical appearances for the sake of well, on the male gaze and then also for um to keep the attentions of our the keep the attention of our husbands um as we age um or to uh to um give the appearance that were um at least like in the the book like with embroidery itself to like um to keep the appearance of like moral or like sexual purity so maybe maybe that what yeah that was yeah going along with what Morgan just said <laughs> like the panel that she's talking about is the inter interaction between my Jane and her grandmother so she says so her grandmother goes, literally goes up to Marjane and is like, you should uh, learn to close your eyes a little. And then she does it and goes like, you really think I look vibrant and intelligent like this? And she said, no, but um, you'll find lovers more easily. And then the book kind of just begins. She's like, yeah, thanks to her half closed eyes, my grandma got married three times. My grandfather was her last husband. Like 
the transition from that like um obviously as like a reader I feel like we're expected to take like Marjane's place and be like this is what is like attractive and then um we're supposed to like instead of taking a moment to dissect that the very next panel is like a full page of her being like yeah and then like all these men like around her grandmother being like look at all the all the men that she got like it worked um so that's like even with what Lauren was saying earlier just something fun that like a graphic novel in particular can do like there wasn't any any like explanation for it um but with Lauren's question about what our initial impressions were uh, we all got to visit visit the book of it and like interact with it um so let's get into the meat of like what we thought and like um what we actually got to experience like from this book versus like what we thought like initially um was anyone surprised by by the themes of this of this graphic novel um I can start I when I first read it okay first of all I read it when I was supposed to be doing homework so I was like oh let me just read like a couple pages and then I think I realized I got too invested because it was very juicy but um I think for me it all all of those like conversations of like the different types of um uh the different types of like marriages that like each like woman had or like the stories that they went through with their lovers it always reminds me of like the conversations even I would have with like my mom or something like that. And she would tell me stories and I'd be like, because a lot of times you're like, oh, these people are married. Like, why would this happen? Why would your husband rob you then leave you in the middle of the night? Why would you have to go to somebody and make a tea and use somebody's fluids to, to keep them together? So many things. And, and then I know like, for me, when I was talking to my mom, a lot of the times, or she would tell me stories, I'd be like, but I thought these people loved each other. And then you always have to remember that, like, people get married for different reasons, like, whatever that is. And um, it was good to see a book that, like, perfectly described that people get married for different reasons. So I thought it was, um, it was very funny, but also, I guess, relatable, because it, it did make sense in the I guess like even in like the immigrant aspect or like the non like Western world like aspect of um, like marriage and how women are supposed to be as like a wife or like as a woman in a marriage, especially in the 50s, let alone even after that. Kind of off of what you said, Douglas, um, I am thinking about like how like this is like a lot of like some neighbors but it's like mostly family and I feel like in like it's like with my family and like family when my mom and I are like gossiping about our family that we're like we're real like these people are crazy and like you're all it's like all different types of like marriages and like different portrayals of love but it's really in like family context that you're like just thrown together like I don't know how to say it but like I'm thinking of Casey Musgrave's song, Family is Family, because she's like, they're, <laughs> they're like, they're crazy, but I love them, and I didn't choose them, but here they are, and like, and that's like really when you get to hear about like all of that, you learn about like all of the different ways that like people can like possibly be living, and I think that, yeah, you're so right, like, I think Amy un unmuted though, um so if you want to say something I'll pass oh, it. oh yeah thanks Morgan for the introduction but <laughs> what Douglas was saying reminded me of like or specifically what he was saying about how people marry for different reasons like it reminds me of like how my mom specifically talks about her marriage like to my dad because she's very like I don't know like kind of brutally honest about it like in the way that it reminds me of how the family members are talking to each other and you're like oh my gosh like I can't believe that they're saying these things with like a young girl around like in like specifically like their culture like Chinese culture and mine um 
it's like people are very upfront like they will literally be like like if I see my relatives they'll be like oh you gained weight or you got fat or you got skinny like or like they'll like make fun of you you know like for however you look so they're very like open like that but also with relationships it's not like as I feel like the lens isn't as romantic like my mom's like yeah like I like this guy in my school before your dad but he rejected me and your dad liked me at the time but he was kind of ugly so like she's literally like I didn't marry him because I was in love with him which is like fine like she just says it like that and she's like yeah and then like you know it just worked out like that and then we came to America and like it's not romantic but it's like normal I guess to them and like probably to more people there which to me I'm like oh my gosh that's so crazy like but then again like people marry for different reasons so yeah Um, so one of our questions that we have is, uh, basically asking about marriage and since we're on the topic now, um, one of it's kind of related to how marriage is presented as a tool throughout the novel. Um, and like just the whole marrying for love versus marrying for financial stability or particularly in embroidery is the allure of Western life. Um, and I think our conversation so far has definitely touched on that. But if anyone has other other thoughts, feelings, further questions about how it specifically works, like in embroideries. Oh, wait, can you repeat that last part, Lauren? It kind of broke up for me. Oh, sorry. Um, so the question is, how does embroideries comment on the institution of marriage? How is marriage presented as a tool and particularly thinking about how like this the gap between marrying for love or marrying for financial stability or the allure of Western life, particularly in embroideries? I like that there were stories included um, of like both sides of it, like. Um, I think one of the characters said it's like like a roll of die like it's just up to luck is you know if your relationship works out or not even if you are in love and or even if you use it as a tool so it's like even it's interesting to see all the different analyses that the women had because of what had occurred to them throughout their lives like a lot of people who married for love were like I wish I would have done it this way and then quite the opposite it's like the grass is greener um type deal and then I just it really did speak to me the way the one lady was just like it's luck like because it really is up to the circumstances I think they use like re roulette as like the yeah the metaphor mm -hmm. so true Yeah, I feel like in all the different scenarios, I kind of didn't expect things to necessarily, like I had a feeling for some of them things were going to play out certain ways, just like the way that she brings up the stories too, and the way that the women around her are reacting, like you kind of know that, oh, maybe this isn't going to go so well. Um, but some of them were, they had me on the edge of my seat, because you really don't know like which way it's going to go, no matter the reason like with the one where she gets robbed literally I was like okay something's also is literally hilarious when she was like he's so handsome da, da, da. and they show the picture like I laughed out loud I I laughed out loud um but yeah it was just fun to like kind of not know where things were gonna go but have a feeling it felt like you were like that's how I would feel in the conversation or like in conversations where like my mom is telling me about oh this this person like the old family drama and family history I don't know I thought she did a really 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 good job of portraying that experience accurately also yeah and I think the humor and even though it's not supposed to be funny but like it, I guess it's sad but like the humor is well that would be like oh yeah well that's life and we keep mm -hmm. and we keep moving and I think it's it's interesting how like I guess if you 
if you look at marriage from like a black and white kind of perspective in that sense it's like okay it's just something I had to do and okay at the point I loved him and then he did this but it was like well well now I'm in this situation so it's either I stay or I go and get this embroidery or I like dust my shoulders off and keep like moving which I think is very interesting mm -hmm. that's true so I it does bring up like oh sorry sorry um bring up kind of like different ways they all deal with it differently too like all of the different characters I feel like they all face some kind of like dissolution of of something like something doesn't work out in all of their different scenarios but they all handle it differently and we get to see that which is fun but yeah yeah, with um, what Lauren's saying, I think it's super interesting, in particular, like this group of women who not only do they have like different experiences, like what Lauren said, but a lot of them very nonchalantly are like, I've been married like in my second marriage or in my first marriage or in my third marriage, which like to us or like at least to me, that represents like almost a lifetime. Like they were probably like a completely different person living in a completely different environment, like based on each different marriage. And this isn't really touched upon, maybe like very briefly um, in embroideries, but in um, Persepolis, which is like Marjane Satrapi's like really iconic like graphic novel series where she talks about like her own life. Um, she, in the second Persepolis, she talks about how she married like very young and was super nervous about getting a divorce. And her grandmother was just like, girl, get a divorce, like just get married again. Um, it's fine. You you missed that, like you messed up this first one, like you can keep doing it. And that's just such an interesting um, perspective to have on it. Of course, there's like different levels, like which which we read about in embroideries about like being a widow and like what that means, or like being um uh yeah like a someone who's like divorced but um yeah we I think that's something like really um already like rips away at like the fairy tale idea of like that one that one marriage you have that like lasts a lifetime or like that you or alternatively like you put up with for a lifetime like these women like in a very sense even though a marriage is put onto them um like portrayed onto them like in the book as like something that they do very young and like um culturally like set on them um in the same way I feel like in western society like marriage is set like um put onto people as an expectation for like longevity and like the rest of your life like you made that decision and that's it whereas we're seeing like various examples of women um who all seem like they're doing fine in the book who are who like have been married just like multiple times um and that was really interesting because I guess they kind of like don't really expect it to last I also thought it was really interesting like the discussions they were having about like not necessarily like loving commitment but like the commit the commitment of marriage that is like distinct from like loving commitment because she would, I don't remember which instance it was in, but she was like, he, yeah, but he doesn't want to, or like, like, he doesn't want to marry me, so he can't be that great. I don't remember where it was, but there was, there's like a really like, yeah, I don't know if that made sense, but the, yeah <laughs> um something else that I just thought about too was like the the age ages that they're getting married at because the first I don't know if it's actually the first instance but where she's talking about like the the, the aunt is like the first one I got married I was 13 um like that is that's an example and then there's also examples of like like later marriages I guess when the the bride would be older um so it's interesting to see how that um like marriage applies throughout different generations um and it's cool that we get to see that in in embroidery sorry I'm looking I have it pulled up on my other screen and I'm looking at it now and it's distracting me <laughs> 
but yeah. Um, I think that goes back to like highlight what we were talking about of like the different um, culture realms and particularly like what I really related a lot to what like Amy was saying about like her mom talking about like very bluntly about her experiences because that's the kind of shock I get from hearing like my mom um, talk about stuff like a lot of people um, with the like I come from like a family of like immigrants. So a lot of my, the people from like my past generation will talk about their like plots of marriage that they had just to get to the US. So for example, some some tea, but my um, aunt married this um, one of my dad's friends who no one knew except her that like he was gay and he was all like, hey, if you marry me, so that no one knows um I'll take you to the U.S. and like I know people in the U.S. and like I can get us there and she did do that and uh, she was like yeah and then they got then they got divorced later on and she had like a kid with him and I didn't find any of this out until like adulthood like maybe like two years ago and I was like oh my god that's how that situation like went down like that's so crazy um and they were just like yeah um that that's what happened and even like um that Lauren, Lauren was saying or like yeah what we were talking about with like the age difference um my grandma got married and she was like I don't know like 15 ish so whenever she talks about it I like in my head I'm always like ew like what well, you're a victim <laughs> but uh, but then I go oh yeah my grandpa is so awesome um so I feel like it's just uh but again like here I, I grew up in in the U.S. and have a completely set like different set of values so it's really interesting like how we navigate that not only like with our own personal experiences but um with like what we know about like each respective cultures and like our, our preconceptions I feel like one of the really interesting parts about this book is that it's like uh Marjane is older so she's like a new adult you know and I feel like that adds a new dynamic to being a part of those conversations because I think like as a child your parents kind of shield you from a lot of these realities about love and marriage and like those types of relationships kind of like what Stephanie was talking about like just absolutely not knowing um, and seeing it so differently so I think it you know it's really interesting to like feel like this is the first time being a part of these like women conversations as an adult um and seeing the differences in like what you thought as a kid and what what is actually happening you know do you guys think that you've broken into the realm of like being viewed as like adult or getting to know the adult secrets like in your guys' family I think that I'm like on my way after this winter break I feel like this winter break I was like okay I found out a lot of things that I just didn't I didn't know before I don't know if it's because I wasn't asking or I don't know why but I, I think that I'm I'm definitely on my way and also um I feel like I literally just realized this like this week or I keep realizing it as I myself get older I'm like older people also lived this age that I'm in now you know what I mean like they also had a like had a newfound adulthood like stage they also like actually have these lived experiences and I feel like it's kind of hard to realize that when you're a kid and just hearing like the stories and seeing the pictures and things like that I don't know if it's because um there's like my parents are like older and then obviously all of their extended families like really old so I didn't get the opportunity to like really really talk to them when I was younger um and find out like their actual like stories and tea but um yeah personally I feel like I, I'm on like level one of being an adult in my family's eyes um but yeah if anyone else has, has... um oh go ahead go ahead Mia this is your this is your time to shine thank you 
Um, I feel like being the oldest, my parents have kind of always overshared to me. I feel like I'm at the age now where like, it's like allowed, but I feel like I've kind of already been there. Like, I just know a little bit, I've always known a little bit too much about my parents' marriage and like the ins and outs of it. And I'm just like, this is like not my place. Like, I see Morgan, yeah, you know, like I just, yeah. But um, it is exciting to hear like from other extended family and to get to that stage because I'm a Gemini moon, so I love tea. Um, I love hearing all the gossip and it's just, there's a lot, there's a lot. I know, I know everybody else has stories too, but it's crazy. Like Thanksgiving, there's always something, but yeah. <laughs> Nia, yeah, I know you be, you be knowing a lot. I, I, I know you be knowing a lot. <laughs> um, but I think also for me, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, um, for me, I think, um, for a while, I've known, I, I'm, I'm the youngest, so maybe, I guess, maybe my parents started telling my sister first, but um, at least since maybe like 16, 17, um, I have been knowing like a lot of things, not necessarily about my like parents' marriage, but like, I think maybe even, for example, like my grandparents or like their family dynamic or like my aunts and uncles and how they all like work and stuff. Um, I think I've been knowing for a while, which is interesting. And I remember asking my mom, like, oh, she's like, should you be telling me this? And she'd be like, well, she said that, like, even when she was younger, like, her mom told her things as, like, not everything, but, like, things to just know, like, as a kid, because she was like, what's the point of hiding it from you all when, like, you go and interact with these people every day? So I was like, okay, that's wise. But I do understand where there can be, like, oversharing um and to the point where you're like okay now I'm now looking where I'm at yeah um I can definitely relate to like being the baby of the family and I think for me like the biggest thing is that like now that I'm out of the house and everything and all my siblings are too like the relationship is like on me and not mediated through my mom like, I have to, like, go and intentionally, like, hang out with my grandparents and, like, all my siblings and everything, and I feel like that changes the relationship so much, because you also get to, <laughs> you get to hear, like, everything that they wouldn't say, like, around my mom, um, so that, like, totally changes things, so I kind of get to hear my grandma's tea about my mom and what she really thinks, um, which has been interesting, um, yeah, sometimes it is just boring being in the adults realm, though, because you just have to talk about the family reunion finances and all that. So I don't love that. <laughs> I'd like to just like, I don't really relate that much because my dad's side is like really boring. And then my mom's side is like crazy. So my mom would like tell me about like, like I have an aunt that's like, I don't think crazy is the right word, but she like has mental health issues that have been untreated like her entire life and it comes out. And it's like, maybe it's oversharing, but it's also like, it's like a warning, like, don't go, don't go too close, okay? And we, we, we realize what happened, but I don't know, like reading this was kind of interesting because I have like, my family's like pretty small. So I've not really had like the community kind of thing. And I think that's like, I mean, that kind of connects to like American ideas of like the nuclear family, right? And how you're not supposed to, even though I think it's better. But yeah, I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of nice reading that in that case. Cause I was like, oh, this is like, like my family doesn't have like nearly this many secrets. I don't think it's, we're just like small right now. So yeah, anyway. Um, Everything that everyone has said kind of is reminding me of, and Nia, you said the word gossip, um, but I think that that's something that's like a big, obviously that's a big theme of this book is gossip, um, and I think it opens up an interesting conversation about what gossip really is, like what the word means to us, the connotations that we normally like hear with it, and what it can mean in a positive context. Um, one of our like discussion questions is, how is gossip a medium for positive social exchange? How can gossip be used positively to build and inform communities? Um, 
but yeah and the book literally starts with the with the quote Morgan brought this up earlier um that Marjane's grandmother says she says to speak behind others backs is the ventilator of the heart so it's also interesting in like a like information exchange like social context versus like emotional way so if anyone has any any thoughts on what gossip means or there the things that like they come to mind when you think about gossip um feel free feel free to share okay personally I love gossip like I think it brings people together it's like historically my experience of it is like a way to gain intimacy so you like start to talk about things like you know about the world and about like people around you but sometimes it can be straight up nasty um but like so how do you like there is because i think both will always exist but i don't feel like we utilize positive gossip enough and also i just i loved how unapologetic the women in the like circle were about like their time together like they're like they just shared everything with each other and it was like a moment where they all felt close like even though they had their like conflicts like, I don't know I think she did a great job of like capturing what's was like between the words in the interactions and like each story and I know they probably didn't all flow like in that exact order according to her life but I, you can definitely tell she like had those experiences and like I think it'd be interesting I don't know what I think the author thinks about gossip but like I would ask other people like what do you get what's the impression you get from the author of gossip or of this book is that about gossip like, do you, how, do you think she views it positively? And like, if so, I think that's like um, a super interesting question. And something that I feel like I noticed like in the book. Um, okay, so obviously we know she is the one who wrote this book about gossip and decided to include all of these really crazy stories, which also makes me wonder how many of them are true and like how, how much did she have to like ask for permission to like um, get this like book published and like circulated to where here we are like talking about those same stories. But um, it's really interesting how there's a point where the eyes all turn to her and they're like, you have a really good story. Like, we know you have a good story. And she's like, no, no, like, that's my friend. Like, I, I would never like um, air her business out in front of you all. And they're like, please, like um, gossip is healthy. And you hear like everyone else's opinions and you see like that shift in her, like pretty easily. She's like, okay, I guess I'll say the story. And then goes into like detail about it. Um, I just think that's like really interesting. And I feel like the, um again in a sense I feel like it might play into the whole like um morality and like making that additional effort to like show like oh oh I'm so shocked I would never do this but then like the wink of like yes I like this is how easily I'm gonna get into it and like really enjoy this conversation and of course like it's a story that she was hesitant to tell and like explicitly said if this ever leaves like just you guys like um I'm gonna know who did it and like oh we all promise and now that same story is like we're reading it so it's a really um it's a very meta way to think about it because as readers we're like immersed in the book and we're just like oh my god like no one's gonna know like shh, don't worry um and then you think about like the very real aspect of it like this is something that um, was literally published and like different stories that got out. Um, so she must be she must be pro gossip in some way, or really like pro um, pro talking about these types of things and about like, of course like all this gossip like focuses around like love and sex and there are so many like sub subtexts behind it, but it like goes. It, like immediately like shows us that like these are conversations that like are happening um and if it comes out through gossip then that's the way it's coming out um and like people can have like 
different opinions about it, but there's definitely at the end of the day, like a lot to learn from that approach. Um, My long-winded response, I'm sorry. No, you you, you ate that. Um, um, I think on top of that too, is like when you do hear these like crazy stories, I think when people read them, it's like, okay, I have something crazy going on in my marriage. I'm not alone. So like, I mean, it may not be the exact kind of crazy, but you know that there's always something crazy going on. And, <laughs> um, and I think when people think of relationships and stuff like that too, sometimes I guess we can we can all get in our head where like, um, oh, I'm the only one, like, this is so crazy that it's happening to me. But then there may be someone very close to you who you know that like, something just as crazy is happening to them. So I feel like, I'm not saying be pro-gossip, but it, like you said, if that's how it comes out, at least it, in a way, maybe the idea of gossip is healthy is that other people could possibly relate to um, what that drama or that gossip is. Does that make me a gossiper? Yeah. <laughs> Um, not me nodding and then you saying that and I was like, no, no, <laughs> um, but, um, last semester I wrote one of my final papers about gossiping basically. Um, uh, and I found, I like read this study while I was writing the paper and I talked about it, um, that kind of defines two different versions of gossip and like what we think of as gossip. So that on one side, the study is called You'll Think We're Always Bitching. And the one part of like one genre of gossip she calls bitching, which that's like a, a interesting title. But um, from the study, it says bitching occurs when women engage in comparisons between themselves and their peers, according to the subject's adherence with feminine ideals. And then the other side is peer group news giving. And that's, she describes it as a more positive genre of gossip in which participants share opinions regarding current events in the lives of their peers in order to maintain social connections. And then later on, she talks about how it's important to, um, like it's important to uh, coming up with um, like values also and like determining your values and social values more generally amongst the group. So I think that that's interesting to separate like separate it out into two different like subgenres and think about it in two different ways because I do think that I think that Marjane is pro gossip and I think it's just like kind of like comes down to also like what we call gossip and like what we think of it as and like the topics that are discussed too and the setting sorry <laughs> but there's just like a lot of things that go into what we determine what gossip is and it's interesting that uh, sorry guys thing, I just keep Things just keep coming in my head when I think I'm done talking. But at the end, um, when uh, uh, like her husband comes back in and she's like, "Leave, like stop, like don't, don't, like go back to sleep." Um, she kind of like asserts that that boundary that like this is their space and this is their like time to talk about those things, and she doesn't want it interrupted, um, which is interesting. But yeah, that was another long-winded answer. I feel like in very like colloquial like terms, you can easily like break it down and be like, when women speak to each other, um, it's called gossiping. And when groups of men speak to each other, it's called like, wait, what was the thing you used? Peer group news giving is one peer group news giving interesting I'm just kidding <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah I feel like the the distinction um is very interesting and not to like I feel like this kind of supplements what Lauren was saying but um there the book come as you are by Emily Nagowski um, she spends like a, a good chunk of it talking about trauma responses, um, particularly like um, for women um, friend groups. And one of the trauma responses that she like identifies as like being very like healthy and like beneficial and um, the highest rate that like people go to like and slash more accessible is um, checking in with like 
your close friends and breaking down situations and like getting like their own perspectives um of things which is something that like when I read it I was like oh I really like identify it with this because if I'm feeling any like strong emotion or um especially when it comes to like themes like talked about income and income as you are which is like a book focused more about like sex and sexuality but also like embroideries which has which shares like similar themes like um the the way that it's a very valid and reliable and accessible way for people to communicate and even like get a form of like therapy because um I feel like in a sense like dissing like gossiping or like completely like denoting it or assigning it like um I don't know like a like putting like gender ties to it um is very like telling of the people who like hold those opinions on like what resources they have access to um but for me something something's happening I'm gonna go to to the besties we're gonna break it down and uh, I feel like that is very healthy um I have a few things but I woke up this morning on Instagram reels to see a meme of uh one of those memes where it was like this guy like like in the sad music and it was like when when she's a 10 but she needs her friend's advice on everything or like needs her friend's opinion on everything yeah but I was like, that's me, because, yeah, I need my friend's advice on everything, and it literally, I think the gendering of, like, gossip is, like, a literal, well, it's, like, an attempt, like, gossip, the knitting circles, and, like, the, the friend conversation, the friendly, like, safe conversations that, like, you have with your friends, and, like, family and like the people that you feel closest with are like and like that's where like open conversation like in its truest form takes place and that's like where people recognize like me oh my maybe I'm something's wrong like whether it's in like the world out in the world culturally or like personally like with relationships like sometimes it takes like your best friend to tell you like oh maybe this isn't the the right person for you and so like in like um broadly like with oh bye tally thank you for coming um broadly like it's and like politically like it's people in power who are like trying to take away like those spaces where like open conversation can take place because of like how like enriching it is and like how safe it is and then also like thinking about it in like relationship contexts like it, it's like a surefire like way to recognize that you're like in an abusive situation when like they want to take you away from like your friends because like that's when those are the people that are going to tell you like where you're going to be safest and where you're going to like um be like comforted and um so I think like the conversation around like the gendering of like what gossip is is like really important um and yeah I can follow that yeah I think it was passing like, the torch the talking stick um so <laughs> for me one thing I noticed too was like in a lot of the stories that were told when the women kind of experience like a trauma or abuse almost always at the hands of a man like sometimes it was supplemented by women in their lives but mostly like it was pain at the which at its root was like men on some bullshit and like they all took the their like wives away or like they made it so that the, she was so busy so she couldn't have like time for anything else, which is the same thing that our like jobs do to us and that like every institution does to, like, it's the need to like separate um, and like make people feel like islands that like mm -hmm. is very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a few, like I feel like media 
um and like movie like depictions of like gossipy circles are like really there are a lot of them and I know women or Lauren mentioned women talking or when we were talking early when when the women were talking earlier <laughs> but we uh if um you haven't seen that movie that it's really really good it's really sad but I think that's like a really beautiful like um picture of um like how um like important and necessary like these types of spaces are and also um Lauren mentioned sex in the city and like like these are all like really like good representations of like how like important like friendship and like meaningful connection is I think that it goes to show, um, like, just comparing, like, women talking and sex and city. I literally haven't seen women talking either. I just, it literally came into my head when I said the words women talking next to each other in a sentence. And I was like, oh, that's relevant. Um, but I think it goes to show, like, what, um, it's, it's like, it's crazy that gossip spans, like, the seriousness of topics too, which is interesting in, in embroideries. Like, I think that the way that she handles it in embroideries is very, like, she she doesn't really go into any of the like I don't want to say that it's not deep but it is just like a conversation you know like she doesn't like break down any anything in it really um but in comparing like sex in the city which I feel like is like you think of for four women just slaying the day away in New York City all day long like doing kind of like frivolous things or whatever and it's like they're gossiping about all of their their silly lives or whatever um but then when you compare it to women talking which is like obviously a more um there there's a lot more seriousness to the topics at hand it's interesting that gossip spans both of those realms and it has an important role in both realms and it kind of shows like what what it could do um but yeah and again media representation I also thought of steel magnolias which I haven't seen in forever but I know it has Dolly Parton in it um and that's another like multi-generational like group of women exchanging basically gossip is just exchanging information and it's like I think it's gendering puts it into like the very specific um subset that it's in also me sitting here with my arm like this because the sun is like beaming right in my face but I refuse to move so yeah um another thing that I um thought about a lot is the um like how um well I think Lauren mentioned this like how like and Stephanie like when um Stephanie was talking about this a few um moments earlier but um Marjane kind of like acts as like an observer like um when she is like listening to all these stories and um, just thinking about like in my own experience, uh, like the weight that I give to like elder wisdom and like the advice that older people are giving to me, like in my family who they're all very conservative and like, just like, yeah. And I, so I think um, I'm, I would love to hear what everyone has to say about this. Um, if if we if anybody has any ideas, I I'm writing a paper right now about epistemic injustice, and um, it kind of touches on like the how like prejudices and like social and cultural information like informs the 
credibility that we give to people who are giving us information. Mm -hmm. um, so like for me being like a young person who's like, yeah, a, a younger person who is hashtag radicalized and is like, you're old and like, how am I, how do you have anything <laughs> that is gonna be of importance? I'm like, it's like really interesting, I think, to think about like how the the concept of like how elder wisdom can not only inform like my um just life, but also like love and relationships and what I can learn from that and like how we can kind of open up this space to like um have like more conversations with like older people and like I don't know, being in like a, at, in like university, I think it's easy to like be in a bubble of like people your own age. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I would follow that up. So I think one thing that's like important and one thing like I've noticed kind of uniquely in this specific space, which is my work, shout out upper cup like there are it is one of the very few like coffee shops i've been to where like you can like talk to a stranger and it's not weird and then like also where like a lot of like people will stay there for hours and have their like conversations and like places that are like hubs for people to like even talk like i think it's businesses are not lucky but they don't utilize like community enough like they're not welcoming it like they don't create a space where it can actually really flourish and also maybe the right people aren't bringing them regardless like there's a lot of factors but like unfortunately we live in a world with businesses no I'm kidding <laughs> but like basically something about how one of the places where it could potentially happen which i think is work and like just like restaurants in general um not my work but like work in general that labor people have to do um are the only places where you kind of get that multi-generational opportunity especially if you don't come from a family where that's really fostered um but it's it's not easy to do and also I feel like there's less stakes because like even in families where like there is that multi-generational element like some like culturally you can't say things to like older people for some like communities because it's just like you just like take what they say and you run with it but it's interesting when you like get to know older people too the grains of salt like as you were saying, like, how do I absorb their wisdom? And also like, why are they, why do they have the worst politics ever? Like, <laughs> um, I think the grains of salt is what matters. So it's like focusing on yeah. that, I suppose. Yeah, the, just to follow up, <laughs> the, um, when I was listening to the Parables podcast, mm -hmm. um, in last month when we were reading Parable of the Sower, um, I'm gonna actually backtrack and ignore what I said because it was not from that podcast and it was actually a different time but it was inspired by that because I listened to Adrian Marie Brown's other podcast uh, the um blanking but I will think of it and put it in there but <laughs> the oh my god okay I'm just gonna collect my thoughts find the podcast name so I can but yeah somebody else, if anybody else has something to say <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit about uh elder wisdom I, I'm a musician, so I've always had like a teacher around me, which has been like, 
like you play piano really well right but sometimes like cause i've done this in the past of like just like okay how you live that's all right like i'm just gonna do that because you play piano well and it's like we were talking about with like how do you have the worst politics and also like all this wisdom it's like even like you've practiced your instrument so well but it's like maybe you're still not that happy or maybe like um like you haven't worked on yourself to that same amount so it's like i have to kind of separate it sometimes i'm like okay i'm gonna tell you what you say about like um like learning jazz standards and like everything else is like eh, maybe i'll take that but i mean i think i'm glad that i have people that are older than me because i feel like it's like the blind leading the blind sometimes when you're just like around young people and it's just like especially i'm a freshman this year but i'm like a year older so i feel like a bit out of sorts especially in my like my freshman music classes where it's like it just feels like more high school in like a kind of negative way and i wish we were able to like have a sense of community which i kind of get in my ensembles but they're like they're different they have different people in it so yeah i'm glad that i have like the older influence but also like it needs to be filtered you know i feel like you have to like take who you can take and then leave what you're not because we're all different too at the same time it's like what worked when you were 21 doesn't work when i'm 20 so anyway um i think it's interesting to bring up the idea of a mentor and like a specifically like um like you brought it up in a music context but i think earlier since we were talking about sewing circles it's interesting to bring it up in the context of like a craft or a uh, like cooking or or some something that's like not it's like something that you too, especially with like relationships with older people, it's something that you can talk about and like that's how like can get to know an older person through. Um, that's not necessarily like just sitting down and having a conversation. You know, I feel like that's how I've like any like wisdom that I've like gleaned from my mom and from not any wisdom. I get wisdom from my mom in other ways, <laughs> but like um stories that she tells me about like my grandma or my great aunt um that I feel I've gained wisdom from are specifically related to um like us trying to figure out this recipe together that we knew that she wrote but we don't know like everything about it or us trying to figure out like how to do this craft or how to sew this way or something like that so I think it's interesting also to separate like mentors in terms of family mentors and then mentors in terms of like non-family ones because there's also things that like I don't particularly want to get super super in depth with my mother about or with like certain members of my family so it'd be interesting to like find an outlet like an older mentor outlet that's like not a family member yeah that was kind of all over the place but yeah Kind of um, going off like the idea of like taking certain things, but not others. I feel like maybe like when I was younger and I kind of found someone who I looked up to, I expected them. I'm like super stoked. I'm like, this is it. Like, you know, and kind of put that pressure on them to be a mentor in like all facets of my life. But like, I feel like just realizing that that is not like a realistic expectation for one person can kind of help to like filter out like like okay like you're really good at like you know this or like giving me like this certain kind of advice but like you can keep the rest of it I feel like that has sort of helped and like kind of I don't know like I shouldn't like limit myself to having one mentor you know like I can just find all kinds of people and I feel like I don't know. I feel like that'd be good. Oh. Guys. <clears throat> Sorry. No, you can talk with him because I was going to switch the topic. Um, I was just going to say that I really like what you said, Aaron. Um, and I think that's a really good piece of advice. Like, you're like, it, conversations like this are encouraged but like you don't have to take everything the grains of salt are what matter but the um thing that I was 
I meant to talk about earlier was the Adrian Marie Brown Emergent Strategy pro- podcast. And I was listening to the episode on civic alchemy. And um, this is kind of like where I think this question like kind of was generated for me. Um, but the um, she was speaking with a person who is like the arts director for the Civic Engagement Commission in New York City. And um, uh, which like they kind of like do different like projects and artistic projects to encourage people to be engaged civically um, in different ways and like reimagining like what that can look like and like how like community involvement can look. Um, but the they had posed the question like with their like leadership team about like what does democracy look like at its best and its most accessible. Um, and they, one person had said, like, it would be a table where, like, elders can give their wisdom, and then youth can, the, the youth can share their dreams, um, and I, um, think removed from the, um, like, context that they were talking about, I think that was just, like, really interesting, and I think, um, it kind of relates to, I mean, it does relate to like embroideries, just like with how like um they mentioned how like attitudes are changing and like how like um culture looks different um as like time goes on. Um, but like there are things to learn from like people who live before us, but we also need to like there that I think can inform like the ways that we can like reimagine and like move forward just for context. Step Morgan, that what you like the quote you mentioned reminds me of a conversation I had with my mom recently, again, bringing her up. But <laughs> um, it was kind of like referring to what you said about like um, the elderly or whatever older people having like wisdom to share and then us having like dreams to share like we were almost having this like argument about like basically what my next steps like after graduation are going to be and she's very much like practical like you gotta get a job like whatever and I I was like oh yeah like well you moved when you were my age and she was like well that was different like I worked five years before you I was independent like I was married and I was like oh but I kind of want to move abroad and like do something else for a year and she's like well she was like, I just don't understand, like, this is just, like, a dream of yours, but, like, you can, it's so much easier for you if you just, like, walk the path in front of you, like, and you'll make things easier for yourself, and, like, I, like, we just obviously, like, had very different perspectives on it, and, like, I thought it was really interesting the way that she, like, was framing it, because she was, like, oh, like, you young people keep saying that the world is changing but like human humans will never change or something like that and she she even was like this is kind of going back to what um you guys were saying before about like like old people having like the worst politics but mom was like oh like you younger generation like you're destroying the world and I was like oh my gosh that is so like whoa that's a lot and also like disagree um but yeah that just reminded me of that conversation and how like it's kind of so hard to especially like having a whole different life experience like obviously than like my mom and like my ancestors that is like weird like to be passed down to where I am now yeah um literally thank you for sharing that because I think that I at least have had the exact same conversation with my mom and many other people in my family. Um, But I think it's important to note that wisdom is not bound by age. And like, there are um, some of the wisest people I know are like my age or like younger than me. And like, I think that you saying that like that we come from like very different perspectives is like really important because it is like just that and like you're you are so wise for like knowing what you want to and I think sometimes 
other people don't know that. If that made sense. Um, Morgan, what you were saying earlier about like histories, basically, I think was interesting um, because in terms of, I don't know, it's interesting to study. I, okay, I bring this up every meeting, but it just is relevant. I study art history and I think that it's like, it definitely informs the way that I think about like mm, the world, obviously, and kind of like myself too, because it's interesting to think about that in terms of personal history, like in relation to what my parents say and like what they think I should do and all of this. Um, it's, it's like nice to be able to like go to them and kind of see what they did and like understand why they did the things that they did in their lifetime and in the in the like moment that they were in and then kind of reapply that to kind of try and take the wisdom from it and reapply that to like my situation now because it's like like someone said this earlier but like we're not in the same moment Harrison I think it was you like we're not in the same things are different now than they were then but there's still information like there's still something to be to be gleaned from their experiences or from older people's experiences so it's kind of going back to the grain of salt thing but I just think it's interesting to apply it in like a personal context as well as like other other ones but yeah okay guys <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I something that like really caught my attention from the book that like I wanted to like ask you guys about um was the idea of like the role of a wife and like committed partner um and the role of like a mistress and the way like how it was presented in the book, just because um there are like so many so many like culturally relevant things where we like get to see it's always it, there's always some sort of love triangle um going on with like the man being like the desirable like object to be one which immediately as I was saying that made me think of the highly popular um HBO series Euphoria um and the whole like is it Cassie and Maddie, right? Okay, and how they're fighting um, over the guy and like want his attention and how Cassie's basically like the side lover, like the whole series. And we're supposed to kind of like be like, oh, like what is she getting out of this, blah, blah, blah. But at, at the same time, like in, um, we're getting this whole like preface of like morality and like encouragement to like, um prioritize that and then we have like the woman like in the story being like why wouldn't you want to be the mistress like why did you go ahead and like take that role with that guy like you like the wife has to cook and clean and deal with him being like having tantrums and like when he's sick and you get him when he's like clean and in a good mood and he just wants to have fun with you and all these things um so that made me really think about like our past hardcover hottie book selections so like all about love but most recently um uh, the will to change um it's pretty crazy to think about like how um how like relationship dynamics are like, expected to work out in that sense and like what we're supposed to aspire um to as like people who are encouraged to like one day be in like committed partnerships um so yeah as I just said expected to be in committed partnerships but in like very in a very like one-dimensional way like they don't talk about the happily committed partnership that also very knowingly like a mistress is involved and like the wife is like I don't care as long as I don't have like all those like all the variations of like that same story um what was presented in the book but also like our own like conceptions of that I don't know was that a salient theme to anybody else 
All right, I want I want to say a few things. Okay. I think that it's like really interesting you brought about all about love because I was kind of thinking about that as like. I think the woman who was talking about like it's better to be a mistress. It's like, I think she was. I don't remember. I read this like really quickly, but I think she was married before. Do you remember? Okay, yeah, she was. I think she like tried marriage, right? She thinks like this is my way to love, and then it didn't work out. She's like, okay, what's my next best option? Okay, I'll just be like a mistress. But I don't think any of the options really got her like what maybe not in the story, but in like real life, I don't think that would really fulfill you. You feel like trying to find love. And I, I think that's what we are as humans. Well, most people. But if you're trying to do that, I don't think being a mistress will do that. And I don't think being in like a unequitable marriage where you have to take care of all the work will do that either. So I feel like, how do I say this? It's like they haven't really thought, well, I don't want to blame them. It's like, I don't think it's like that. I think they aren't, we aren't like taught to think like, we're taught to think like these are our only options. Well, I think there's like much more relationships. And you're talking about like, we're all supposed to be in committed partnerships. It's like, that's even kind of a, one sec. That's even kind of like a, a like an idea that's not necessarily required. You know, you can still have like a happy life and feel love and connection without that. So. Um, what you said about that you can like still have a happy life and find love and connection without that this is like random but I saw literally an Instagram reel today um, of an older woman and she was talking about they were I think the question was like if you could thank anyone who would you thank and she said all the men that left me because if they hadn't I wouldn't have realized like that I can find like love and I can like love everything um and I don't need it to be like romantic. It was like kind of, it was, I watched it a couple times. I was like, it was very real. Um, but she, she was just like, um, yeah, she was like, I can find love in other things being alone. Um, and I don't think that being alone is necessarily like, I don't think that's the solution. Like the end all be all is like, okay, have none of it. Um, but I do think that, um, that was just an interesting, like little, little anecdote that goes along with what you were saying but yeah I don't know why again like Stephanie said the Instagram reels are just they're they're everywhere because it was that older woman that was on the street wasn't it yes it yeah. was <laughs> yeah. are, they are winning they are yeah. winning yeah. um but yeah like I I don't know I feel like it, <laughs> kind of what Morgan said in the chat like yeah people are marrying for different reasons so I guess they people end up settling for things where they're like that and I guess that comes to the mindset where it's like oh okay well if I'm gonna settle I'm not gonna be the woman who he's coming and he's complaining and he's whining but I'm ironing and he's da -da -da while he's like having fun with his mistress so um I I don't know I guess I, I don't I really don't know where I was going with that either, but I I think when people are in these relationships, I guess um a lot of like self-reflection has to go on too of like what we want before we make the you know the decision of like okay, what's this marriage gonna be? Um and so yeah. Um, shout out to the Hardcore Hotties playlist, Embroidery's playlist, which you guys should, first of all, stream, second of all, add to. Um, there's a song that I added to it, and it kind of brought me back to what Lauren, both Lauren, what Lauren and Douglas were, um, talking about, what, um, the Instagram reels brought to the table today, but it's, um, Tia Blake's Wish I Was a Single Girl Again, and in like the basically the lyrics of the song are like this woman um talking to like the listener being and basically being like hey um when someone is like talking to you and telling you like all the great things they're gonna offer you like consider um what you already have basically like it like 
in terms of like happiness and the whole song like compares like how she was like when she was single and then how her life looks like is changed through like um her marriage basically her relationship like that part is really talked about but just the whole concept of it the first time I heard that song I thought of my mom um and I was just like damn like I um going back to like what we were all talking about or like also what Amy brought up earlier like with um her mom and um talking about like her past relationships like my mom will be very nostalgic for her youth and like her independence and everything that like she had when she was younger like all that was going for her and then the notable the notable shift in that is like her um marrying my dad and like that's just like such a like interesting like dynamic to have and also to be aware about like first of all like me as um like the daughter but just like me as someone who is general like generally like fed like the conventions of like yeah um if you want to experience this like supreme bliss and like happiness um the secret you're not gonna like know it until you know it and it's until you find like romantic love like until then like good luck like kind of sorry for you like that's just like such an interesting route that that we're all like expected to follow whereas like what Lauren brought up like there is just so much beauty and like friendships and communion and um sharing like care and compassion through like other ways as well. Um, that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. That is so real. And I literally, like, as I was speaking, I was thinking about that song. That's probably like my favorite one that I've added to the to the playlist so far. First of all, the playlist is awesome this month. It's so long um and there's so much good stuff on there but yeah that song just she says it and I feel like that's something that I've heard from like multiple older women um and it's just interesting as a young person hearing that too because it's like okay is that gonna be me one day question mark hopefully not but as we've seen in embroideries it's kind of like hard to I feel like it's almost hard to avoid in like some ways I don't know it's hard to like have your cake and eat it too, I feel, is kind of what's being brought up, which is like, no, but yeah. I choose to remain optimistic um, in all aspects. I would really, really encourage you guys to, apart from the playlist, um, look into the media map because a lot of like the supplemental like movies and books like do a really good job of like breaking down like themes from the book something that kept coming to mind for me even though this wasn't like explicitly talked about um is the book um regretting motherhood by like orna yeah, uh, I was just talking to Erin about this book too earlier, but um, it's this woman um, from Israel who like took time to like talk to women and like have them break down like their experiences like being a mother and like what um, like their perspectives on that and a lot of them like have like regret and like are like they're all like anonymous inter interviews because they're like so nervous about like speaking on that, um, which Oh, this one is on for sure on the meeting map. It's called Sex and Lies by like Layla something. But um, she interviewed women in Iran and like got all of their stories, um, like things that like very similar um, to what we read like in embroideries, but some of them have like varying levels of like seriousness because she does take like more of like a journal journalist journalistic approach um to the stories that she includes. But um super super interesting stuff um but we would also like to take a moment to invite like any um final thoughts or things that were like interesting feedback did y'all like a graphic novel who's like 
this first time? Was it reading a graphic novel? Like all those things. Um, and any any final comments before we start wrapping up and um, inviting you guys to do the little comic activity? It was actually my first time with a graphic novel. So I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, okay, I might not love it, but I actually really loved it because it was like really fun to read. And like, obviously the illustrations were like cool and funny and yeah, but it was like watching TV. So I was like, oh, this is like so nice. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be like not enjoyable, but I loved it. Um, I also really enjoy. I also really enjoyed it. Um, reading a graphic novel, and I think it was nice. Um, I always enjoy like our conversations, but I think it was nice to have like a story where we could like look back and laugh and like be and like gasp, and it also still be funny, but then like still have like I guess like conversations about like theory and like what marriage could be and still get like a little bit deeper with it. So uh, <laughs> that is very true, Stephanie. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed just like being able to laugh and then also being able to come here and discuss like the deeper topics, but also still like the lighthearted parts of it as well. Thank you, Harrison. It was so nice um, seeing you. Um, hope to see you soon. I really love the book. Um, I love graphic novels in general. Like that's typically the the format of books that I go to. But also, speaking of, it's like watching TV. I felt like I was watching Wendy Williams' uh, Hot Topic segment. So shout out to Wendy. I miss her. Um, but yeah, I was I had so much fun reading this book. Okay, guys. Well, to reiterate, um, what we mentioned in the beginning of the meeting. We very much invite all of you to um, take a moment to reflect on like um, an antidote of like your life where like either you've had um, an epic love story, an epic love like flop, um, a moment where you've got to like connect with an elder. I feel like people are bringing that up or just like a, a space where like you feel safe to like start sharing all these things like how Dean was talking about like upper cup um and doing a, a cute a cute little doodle uh, I know that um we not we might not all feel like we're artists or are like people doing that but like stick figures are super underrated so um all you need for for a cute little comic a little one panel comic is a tiny little icon and like a little speech trouble, which I feel like would be so fun if um, we were able to do it. So yeah, go ahead, Morgan, because I feel like I'm explaining it weird. Oh, no. You did a wonderful job explaining that, I feel. Um, but if anybody does have to leave, I was just going to say that you can DM us on Instagram your little picture or email us and I did want to take the time to say the book of the month for April if that's an okay time to do this excellent <clears throat> okay drum roll um so this April for um Arab American Heritage Month we are going to read a book, which is actually, I wish she was here, but a recommendation from Tally, hardcover hottie Tally. Um, and we're gonna be reading Conditional Citizens on Belonging in America by Layla Lalami. Um, and <clears throat> it's kind of like an, a, an account of her experience um, um, as a, 
um, from uh, as an, a Moroccan immigrant um, to U.S. citizen, um, and she argues. Okay, on like the little tagline on, I haven't read it, but I'm really excited to read it. And I think it will generate like a lot of like really interesting conversation about like what um, citizenship looks like, the conditional aspects of it. Um, and on Google, it says, in conditional citizen, she argues that um, they are all the people with whom America embraces with one arm and pushes away with the other. <clears throat> so I think that this is going to be a really like enriching read. Um, I think we're also going to be able to connect it back to some of our previous readings that we've done like throughout our time um, as a group. Um, so yeah. We will, I haven't like done a lot of like research on like where to find like how to like access the book, um, but um, I'm going to try my best to find PDFs and um, places to get it. Um, as always, we'll be meeting the first Sunday of May, um, which is at graduation. N it shouldn't it be May second? Because isn't May first the the first Saturday? May first is a Monday, and the first Sunday in May is a Sunday. I mean, wait, is graduation? <laughs> it is a Sunday. Yeah. It is a Sunday. Yes, yes. Okay, so maybe some of us will be walking, um, and getting our diplomas. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I'm just well, gonna- We'll keep you updated, email. we'll keep you all updated. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure that out. Email Christina Johnson. <laughs> yeah, can we move graduation? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have a work on that day. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I and go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think I just found a PDF. So I'll send it in the chat. Yay. Researcher. Art historian. Um, um okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Morgan. No, you go ahead. I wasn't gonna say anything even. So okay, I was gonna say that um everyone, if you have to go, you can go. But I'm gonna be thinking um about whether or not you're doing your drawings. And I, I've been starting on mine. So know that um, company, company would be appreciated. But goodbye to all those who have to go. Thank you so much for coming. Um, see you next month. And love at Gladys. Bye. Bye. Also, Stephanie, I'm in the studio. You're in the studio? Yeah, I slipped it around to your, your nose. Oh, I'm in the studio right now. Are you doing your cartoon drawing in the... I saw you. Oh, you saw me? From outside the window. Oh, are you gonna... okay. Are you doing your cartoon up there? Um... Well, I'll go, I'll go to you. Um, Aaron, what's up? Thank you so much for coming. Not a whole lot. My roommate has got COVID now. So just hanging out. The gall of him. Okay, guys, <laughs> um, Morgan and Lauren, for context, Aaron is in my technical editing class. Yeah. It's they, as rough heard, as it sounds. They've heard all about it. <laughs> um, dude, you should totally do a little 